Over the past three years, my area of study has been concentrated very heavily on learning as much as I could about genome sequencing, genome editing, and genome therapy. It's the science that basically will take the disease out of our body and eventually our bloodline, as well as out of any uh, plants, animals, any living thing by using what is called CRISPR, a part of our makeup that cures the problems naturally within our body. One of the problems that we face is our DNA has been corrupted by our ancestors through their lifestyle, through what they ate, what they inhaled, and thus our DNA is, is corrupted. It's a mutation. Through CRISPR, they can go into our bodies, take that mutation, correct that mutation, and take things like cancer and Alzheimer's and heart disease and Parkinson's and dementia out of our bodies so that they don't kill us. That's the science that I had studied, and I thought by this time would be a part of our life. But we had the coronavirus, which put the medical field in a position where they couldn't do the clinical studies that they needed to to make this happen. Now we're through the coronavirus for the most part, and we are on the verge of a medical care revolution. We're now going to go to medical cure. As a result of my study, I've recognized there are a number of companies that are going to be a part of this revolution and are going to give me the opportunity as an investor to, mul to multiply my returns exponentially because of the huge change this is going to uh, facilitate. So now what I've done has gone to the stocks that I've owned and analyzed them and put together which are the best for this revolution that is about to occur. And that's what I want to share with you today. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. These are the key players in what I choose to call the genomic revolution, that which is going to cure the diseases that kill us. That's George Church, uh, Feng Zhang, David Liu, Emmanuel de Carpentier, and Jennifer Doudna. These are the people who are the driving force behind the companies that I'm showing there uh, that are going to introduce the means to take the disease out of our body. What I've been doing then is following them over the last three years, learning as much as I can about how they interrelate with each other, what diseases they're got trying to cure, and how they're progressing, how they're doing financially, and then investing in them. The stocks basically skyrocketed as this information became public knowledge in, 19, in 2019 and early 2020. And then as the pandemic took uh, hold and slowed down the ability for them to do clinical studies, the prices collapsed and became a fraction of what they had in the past. They've recovered a bit, but they aren't back to their highs. So what I wanted to do was evaluate my holdings and my portfolio and look at what uh, who are going to be the winners in this game. So what I did was search the genomic ETFs to find those companies that other people have identified as potential players in the genomic revolution. What I then did was evaluate the companies, find, figure out which ones are the real key players, which ones are actually going to be the winners in it, that if from my evaluation, and I'll go over how I determined that, determined that, and these are the stocks that I believe that are going to give me the kind of returns that Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, 
and Google gave us in the digital revolution. These are going to be the stocks that are going to give me the returns in the medical cure revolution. So let me take you to my trusty computer and Excel spreadsheet and show you the process I've gone through to rank them so that I know how I want to distribute my portion of my assets in the what I think is going to be the biggest gainers in the next seven years. What I've done here is create an Excel spreadsheet that lists the 17 stocks that the uh, majority of ETFs identify as the players in the field of genomic revolution. And uh, then what I did was weed through them because what I wanted to create was a pure genomic play. Uh, as you can see, they several companies are basically pharmaceutical companies. These are people who are, are playing in the uh, genomic field, but this is not their main field of, con of uh, concentration. So I have el eliminated them. Um, Ab AbbVie and um, no Novoris, they are they're large pharmaceutical companies, and you can see that in that I show you their market caps over here, 276 million, 215, 202. They're not real players in the genomic field. These are not the people who have lab technicians working around the clock to find uh, the use of CRISPR. I then went through and said that, okay, also in these ETFs, they're, they're showing equipment people, in, in particular such as Illumina and uh, Pacific Biosciences. These are the people who make the machines that are going to sequence your genome. They are not the people who are going to actually make the therapies and the editing of the, the ability to edit your, your genome. So uh, that took them out. Then what I did was I created a, uh, a when they were founded. And what I basically was saying that this is new science and that the science really didn't come into to play until roughly 2012, 2013. And so I took out those companies that uh, her, were basically in the business, but they've never really shown any ability to, uh, to, to, to progress. And that took out people like uh, Bluebird, uh, Sen Sengamo, and Precision Biosciences. So then what I was left with was those companies, and there's uh, three, six, uh, nine of them that I felt are the key players. And you'll notice some of the names are um, represented by the people I showed you early on as the 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 real pioneers of this this field. So I came down to CRISPR, uh, Illumina, Beam, um, Versa, Versive Therapeutics, Allogene, Editus, Invate, Caribou, and Celetics. Uh, then what I did was sh show you their price, um, their high in the last 52 weeks, and their low in the last 52 weeks, and then showing here where they are relative to their 52-week high today. So if we go down here to CRISPR, we see that uh, CRISPR's high was... Um, $86.95. Their current price is $50.84. That represents 58% of their high, okay? And that's what this repre represents. Um, I then color-coded them to say, um, does this have any reflection on how I feel they're going to do in, in, the, in the future? And um, as I say, see here, that tells me on Invate, the market is not real confident of this one. Um, and so, therefore, uh, th that gives it, I guess you would say, a, a, a bad rating relative to the, the price 
and the measure of confidence of the investment community. Then what I did was go into Seeking Alpha and I uh, extracted what are their current assets uh, consisting of, um, of investable assets and cash and came up with a number for each of those. Then I went in and said, what was their revenue uh, in um, the past uh, uh, reporting period, which would have been for 2022? Uh, so that's their revenue. I then went in and said, well, what does it cost them to run their business on uh, an annual basis in the last year? Again, from Seeking Alpha, I came up with their operating expenses. So I, I added these two together, their assets and their revenue, and then divided that uh, by their operating expenses. And I came up with, if, the, if everything continues to go at the pace it is, this is how long they can stay in business. Okay, uh, 26 years for CRISPR, uh, 15 for Intella, uh, 12 for Beam, and then we get down here to um, uh, Ver Verve Therapeutics. They got 2.3 years. Um, Allogene, they got a half a year, they, may, maybe seven months. Um, Editus, they got 4.6. Um, Invate, they've got what, uh, 20%. 20, 30 percent, they've got a quarter. They, they, they could be out of business by the end of March. Um, Caribou has seven years, and Celetics has uh, similar, they've got the first quarter of this year. So they either have to dilute their stock, or they have to go out and raise some more money, or they need to be acquired. So that that gives me a feeling on them. Then I went back to uh, Seeking Alpha and got the ratings from the Wall Street um, analysts as well as their quant ratings. And what this is, is a gathering of all the information that Seeking Alpha can gather from this, uh, putting it in with their author's ratings as well, and coming up with a rating. And as you can see, the only one that really is high is that of um, of uh, uh, CRISPR. And then they're, they're all from that point on middle of the road. No real definition there. On Wall Street Journal, uh, the, the top three, CRISPR, Illumina, and Beam, stand pretty good in a, rate, in a, um, a one to five, uh, as does Verve. Um, so does uh, Allogene. They apparently don't know uh, the financials here. And, um, and then you have also that uh, it, it's showing, what is that, caribou as, as a good one. So this gives me then some sort of information as to how do I rate my holdings in, in, this, in this category. The other thing I want to interject in here that I think is very, very important is that um, there, there was a battle that's gone on for, I guess, uh, it was started, I think, in about 2020, a, uh, who owns the patents for the science, and the science is, carries the title of CRISPR, uh, who owns the patent for that? And that came down to the owners uh, of Editus. And so I, I look at this and I say, um, maybe they aren't the strongest in, in the batch, but I got to give them, give them a, a boost up. And that is to say, no matter the only company in here that is not using CRISPR as a part of their science is Beam. Um, they're, they're using what is called base editing that uh, doesn't use CRISPR. But every one of these other companies, whoever succeed in using CRISPR to take disease out of our bodies, uh, out of the bodies of animals, out, out of it changing the DNA of, of plants, uh, are going to pay Editus a, a, a royalty. So I've got 
to my way of thinking, I've got to own them. Then I look, and I want you to notice I have down here Sherlock Biosciences and Mammoth. These are two startups that are also um, influenced or part of the founders are of the five people I showed you early on of diversifying their holdings and diversifying their science. They're, as Jennifer Doudna might be, uh, or, or uh, Sen Zhang is very instrumental in some of these others because he, he knows there's variations on the science that can be focused on by other companies. So they're diversifying their knowledge, I guess you would say. So those are things that you need to be aware of. Okay, so where am I going from here? Well, as I have said for the last three and a quarter years, I'm a long-term investor. I look at events. I, in, I, I look at what's happening in our world. I look at the science and, and I say, okay, if the world is going to change in this direction, who's going to take us there? And that's that's what I believe genome sequencing, genome editing is. I've, I've studied it. I understand where it's going. Now what I have to do is manage the companies that are in there and how much my holdings are. And that's what I just shared with you there. I did a similar thing yesterday on managing my big tech holdings, particularly in the area of semiconductors. And so I'm going to continue to manage those areas I'm interested in. I, I, I also hold uh, a good holding in what I call my defense portfolio because I think we have, we have recognized, we had thought for a long time that any, any aggressive activity that was going to happen was going to happen through cyber warfare. We've learned that's different. So there's a good chance we're going to be continuing to support Ukraine if Vladimir wins over there and makes moves further, then we got NATO nations involved. The United States becomes militarily involved. We have a similar situation in uh, China. If they continue to be aggressive towards Taiwan, we could be involved in a military thing. So I want to have a military portfolio. And then I want a dividend portfolio. So I'm going to go into management of my portfolios. And that's what you just saw. Now, where I'm going with that is I need to have a vehicle by which I share what I'm doing, how, what I'm holding, and what trades and, and changes I'm making in that portfolio, and we do that through our Discord. What's our Discord? We have three levels. We have one where you just come in, it's $4 a month, and you, you chat with other people because I believe this is a team game and you learn from the other people. The other element of it is uh, $10 a month, and that's where you um, get access to my long-term portfolio, those things that I'm, I'm uh, it, like I just shared with you. And then you get trade alerts as I make changes and adjustments in that. And then the third level is the platinum, and that's where Mark Willis uh, does his teaching on swing trading. Whether you're a swing trader or not, I, I think that's well worth um, the tutorials and the exposure. So that's where that's what we're building. Now, I've recognized that there are some people who are not comfortable with the Discord. So what I'm going to do and what I'm working on right now is upgrading our website. So a lot of this information is going to be available to you on the website in maybe a little bit more comfortable structure. Uh, you, what you're going to find there is uh, exactly what you find on the Discord, but in a different format. So that's where I'm going. Uh, I believe I'm on the right track. Uh, I believe that I don't want to be involved in the day-to-day -day activity of the, the stock market because it is influenced by emotion and manipulation. Um, what I want to do is get on the train that can't be stopped. And one of those trains, as I said, is genome sequencing and genome editing. The other is big tech. Uh, these are things that you aren't going to stop. Artificial intelligence is not going to go away. It's only going to get more dynamic and go into general uh, intelligence. And that's where the machine, com the, the, the uh, computer basically uh, takes over our lives. 
and we we basically become entertainers. And probably somewhere in there, there's going to become a universal wage. Uh, I think it's going to be tracked attached to the internet. Uh, if 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 uh, Google is making making money off of my searches by selling advertising, then Google should share that money with me. If if I'm providing all the entertainment and the pictures and this and the talk on Facebook, well then and and Facebook is selling ads around it, well then Facebook should share that money with me. That this this is inevitable. <laughs> because we are supporting the technology. And and if they are using our data through gen- through uh, 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 machine learning and uh, our artificial intelligence, and it's our data, then and they're making money off it. They should share the money with us. It, this is inevitable. Um, so that's where we're going. Uh, the, our 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 structure of our world is going to change dramatically, both geopolitical and economically. And, and our, our way we entertain ourselves. So that's what this channel is all about. That's what I want to do for you. And um, you'll find a link to the Discord. And uh, that's where you can follow my form of investing. And you can have access to Mark's. You, you're going to find Trent over there, my son, who also uh, shares his knowledge. I want this to be your place uh, to, to learn and to, to grow by. I'll talk to you more about this tomorrow and then probably the following week. Bye-bye.